Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is best responses. I cover this in lesson 1.3 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check out the video description for more information about that. This will be the last video that we do on lesson 1.3. So the game looks like this. We have two generals and they each have three units. These generals are going to simultaneously decide how many units they should allocate to an upcoming battle or either side can unilaterally opt out of the battle. The generals can basically say that, eh, you know, I'll pass and move on. So in the actual outcome of this battle, the side with the most units is going to win, but if the sides have the same amount or one decided not to play, then the game just ends in a draw. So we call this game safety in numbers, and here's what the payoff matrix looks like. So each player has four strategies. They can either pass or they can send one unit, two units, or three units to go out into the battle. If one side passes, then it's an automatic draw, right? So that's those seven different outcomes right here. In these three different outcomes, then the generals are sending the same number of units out, and so they're drawing as well. And in these three outcomes here, the first general, player one, is sending more units than the second general, so he's winning. And the opposite is true over here. So in these three outcomes, general two is sending more units out than general one, so general two is winning. Now, in the past, when we were looking at the stoplight game or in the stag hunt, what we would do to find pure strategy Nash equilibria is look at each of the individual outcomes and see if anyone has a profitable deviation. Now, this is a problem when you have a lot of different outcomes. So in this game, we have 16 different outcomes, and it's possible that you could have a much, much larger game than even this. And when you're doing that, when you're going through each, every single outcome, when there are a lot of them like in this game, that's just going to be too time consuming. And so it would be really nice if we could come up with a different way, a more efficient way of figuring out what strategies are a pure strategy Nash equilibria. And we can actually do that by marking best responses. So a best response, what is that? Well, given what all other players are doing, a strategy is a best response if and only if a player cannot gain more utility from switching to a different strategy. And a game is in a Nash equilibrium if and only if all players are playing best responses to what other players are doing. Now, this definition of Nash equilibrium down here, it's similar to what we've been saying before, where Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player can change his or her strategy and do better. And basically, all that we've adjusted to this is we've defined what a best response is, and so we've lost a little bit of wordage from this definition by replacing the term best response. But this is basically what we've just been saying before, now using the terminology best response. So the way we actually can mark best responses in a game is by isolating a single player strategy and figuring out what the other player should do in response to that strategy. So here, I have isolated player two's move. In this case, she's playing two units. And now what we need to do is we need to look through all of player one's payoffs, in this case, a zero, a negative one, a zero, and one, and mark which of those payoffs is the greatest. In this case, it's obviously the one. In this case, if player one sends out one or sends out three units, and player two is only sending out two units, that means player one is going to win. In the other cases, he's either going to draw or lose. So this is the best response here. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark it with an asterisk, just like that, to note that this is a best response. And when we're marking best responses in a game, what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat this pattern over and over and over and over again. So we have four different strategies for player two. So let's just go through all four of those strategies for player two. And then once we've done that, we're going to go switch over to the four strategies for player one. And we're just going to mark all of the best responses like that. So let's move on to the next strategy. So there's the game as a whole, and we have the best response marked here. So now let's move over to, uh, let's see, one unit. So if player two is only sending one unit out, if player one passes or gets one unit sent out, then he draws and gets zero. But if he sends two or three units out, he wins. He gets a one. So these are the two best responses. Notice that there are more than one best response in this particular case. When player two sends out one unit, player one is indifferent between sending out two or three. It's a win either way for him. So both of these are best responses. So we mark both of those outcomes for player one with asterisks, just like that. And then we move on to the next strategy. So what's that going to be? Well, we're going to start over here with number three. So if player two sends out three units, then if player one passes, he gets a zero. If he sends out one or two units, he loses. And if he sends out, sends out three units, then he draws. So these are the best responses right here, the zeros, because they're the highest or the greatest utilities available to player one if player two chooses to send three units out. So the zeros get the asterisks. 
And then lastly, we just got to consider player two's pass move. And in this case, player one is indifferent between all four of his strategies. He earns zero regardless of what he chooses. So all four of those are best responses. All right, so we have gone through all of player two's moves and we have marked all of player one's best responses. So that means we're halfway done. Now we just need to consider the other half. We need to consider player two's best responses to player one's actions. So let's just go down the line here. If player one passes, player two is indifferent between all of her strategies. All of these are best responses to player one passing. So all of those are gonna get an asterisk, just like that. And moving on, let's go to player one playing one unit. In that case, player two can get zero here, zero here, one here, and one here. Ones are greater than zeros. So both of these are best responses. They both get asterisks. And moving right along, if player one selects two units, then player two can get zero, negative one, zero, or one. One is the largest number there. This is what gets the asterisk. And then lastly, if player one is sending out three units, then player two can get zero, negative one, negative one, or zero. The zeros are the greatest here. So pass and three are best responses to player one choosing to send three units out. And that marks all of the best responses. We are now done marking all of the best responses in the game. Now I want you to go back to this definition of best responses and how it relates to Nash equilibrium and really highlight the fact that a game is in a Nash equilibrium if and only if all players are playing best responses to what the other players are doing. Well, what does that mean? What that means is that if we take all of these outcomes and we look at each of the boxes, any box with two asterisks in it, basically one for each payoff like this one right here, these are mutual best responses. And so that means a game is a Nash equilibrium if you're in a box that has two stars because what player one is doing here is a best response to player two strategy. And what player two is doing here is a best response to player one's strategy. And so all we have to do is just look to see where the asterisks are. And we see that there are four boxes that have two asterisks in them. This is pass, pass, pass three, three pass, and three, three. So these are the four pure strategy Nash equilibria. The rest of these outcomes can't be Nash equilibria because they aren't mutual best responses. We know that because if they were to be best responses, if they both were to be best responses, then they, then they would both have to have asterisks in their boxes. And none of these other cases have those qualities. It's just these four boxes that have the best responses for both players. So these are the only four pure strategy Nash equilibria. So notice that when we did this best response method, it was much more efficient than going through 16 different outcomes. All we had to do is consider four different outcomes here and four different outcomes or four different strategies up here and four different strategies down here. So that was basically doing half of the work rather than looking at 16 different situations, we only had to look at eight. So when you see more complicated games like this, it's always best to mark the best responses and see what happens and find your pure strategy Nash equilibria like that. All right. That wraps up this video and that wraps up our initial discussion on pure strategy Nash equilibria. In the next game, we're gonna see that not all games have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. And so we'll look at what to do if you ever arrive in that situation in the next video. Join me then.